So imagine going to a bank and asking for an account balance and getting an account balance and the database hasn't revealed that you have made a purchase in which case your account balance is wrong and so this was a big deal with checks and people that you all remember this because you used to live with checks where you had to think about you had to make sure that you knew what checks were out and because if they were just putting the check in the pocket you wouldn't know when they were going to withdraw it so you need to make sure to maintain that balance we can think about that with databases as a similar concept that we need to be able to um, make sure that the user gets the correct information as soon as we can. Um, so the question I want you to be able to answer at the end of today is what's the relationship between a spreadsheet and a database? What's your idea so far? What do we know about what a database does? How do you think it does that? What structure? Tables. Tables. Uh, we can think about a database as a relationship between spreadsheet tables. And when we say spreadsheet, we mean organizing data into what? Spreadsheets simply are and and rows a database is simply a set of tables that are organized into rows and columns that's it at its fundamental level so if we have spreadsheet 1 and spreadsheet 2 I gotta do better with my writing since this is going online spreadsheet 1 and spreadsheet 2 what we're gonna learn about is that the columns between these can be connected in a relationship between those two columns. And it's that relationship between the, the spreadsheets that we want to be able to understand better today. So what are some things you like to collect that you might loan out to other people. I mean, I was normally databases are used for business and tracking customers and purchases and you can find a gazillion examples of those out there because businesses use spreadsheet or use databases for that. But I thought we could build something that's a little bit more community oriented. So let's imagine it's something that you have or maybe you want to get a collection of and then you can loan it out to people, but you care about this stuff. So you want to be able to know who has what and make sure that you don't lose these items that are important to you. So I do this with programming books because I have a lot of students and I loan them out to a bunch of people. But it's just a spreadsheet and so I'm designing a database, I'll design a database along with you for organizing how would I loan out and structure a book database in a little bit more of a, a conscientious fashion. So um, what do you like to collect? What could you make? You're all gonna make a database of something you enjoy. It, could, it doesn't even have to be something you physically have. It could be something like cars that you would imagine someday in your future self. You have a whole garage full of cars and you can loan them out to friends. <laughs> Richard said no. <laughs> you don't want a garage full of cars? Nope. <laughs> I don't know if I'd loan them to friends. Okay. You can, uh, they, they can come in and look. It'll be the, uh, the, the uh, guest database for the cars. Um, you ought to help me out here. In the old days, there were albums. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vinyl albums. Right. Yep, I've got, th that's a Dominic's thing. You should see his um, bid. He did a bid for making vinyls, and he even has a link to a cool YouTube video about how you actually make and stamp the vinyls. So, and he's like two generations behind you. This is amazing. Okay, so records or albums. What might you want to record about those records? The title. The title. You're here. We were just talking about your, your vinyl records. Richard said, oh, it's uh, the, of the past, but it's not. So name. Dominic, what else can we record about vinyls or albums? We're making a database of something that you enjoy to collect, you like to collect, and you might want to share with people. So what are some things we'd collect? Name. Well, I mean, for one thing, when I was a kid, I always collected the, uh, the different quarters from all the states. 
Okay, that's a whole other topic. So coins. <laughs> yep. Let's think with records for a second. Name of the name of the record, obviously. Uh, genre. Genre. The importantly. Release date. Oh, release date. Yep. I got. I remember. Got to write better. Let me try it bigger. Release date. Yeah, that's an interesting. We got to figure out how to do that. That's cool. A release date. We're missing the big one. The artist. The artist. Yep. And so we need to find a way to figure. Can we? Could we store songs? That's a perfect application for a database, and we'll see why. Um, this is great. Now, in database land, the new concept that we want to think about is data type. So a key difference between a spreadsheet and a database is that when we make a database table, it's not just going to be a grid that we can dump numbers and letters into. We have to tell it one by one, in this column, we're going to store data that's, uh, we're going to call the column something. So we have to enforce the column rules. So the columns will have a name, and they'll also have the type of information they can store. So name, we would say, would be uh, text. There's a couple of different uh, common names to describe the same kind of data type. So text, another one that you'll see in databases is string. String is the programming word for text. Um, let me see if I can, I'm going to make this clearer. So data types. Can we still see this? Uh, text. String, character. These are all possible names for letters. Um, what's a what about? Let's say we want to do a rating of each song out of five, so five stars. What would be the data type for rating? Yep. Name, so we'd make a column for rating. And so I'm going to use a different color for the data type. So name was uh, text. Rating would be integer, meaning no decimal place. Um, we want to have the release date. Now, release date, do we want to store that as a number or as text? What would be a pro or a con? It is numbers. But would we ever do math on a release, release date? Would we ever add the years? We might sort it. We might sort it. That's, a, that's great thinking. Um, so there would be several camps of thought on this. My database design preference is if you're not doing math on it, don't call it a, an integer. So phone numbers, for example, I don't store as really long integers because I don't think it's, it's not the type that relates to what the number actually means. So let's do release year, and we'll do it as text. And we can still, uh, to Richard's point, we can still sort because we can sort text, uh, but it won't be sorted. Um, we'll, we'll have to experiment with the sorting. Uh, release type. Artist, great. Let's do artist. And what would the artist type be? Text. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with that. We're not going to get too rambunctious. So in a database, we start by building the table according to its columns. In databases, each row is called a record. And I really shouldn't have put records. We'll say albums um, because we don't want to confuse terms. So each row corresponds with one instance of whatever you're storing in that table. So these are called records, um, more commonly just a row. Uh, but we treat them as a, a chunk of data. So I like to use the database term record. So let's enter some data. Um, look at what I did with my columns. They're too small. Um, let's do this. I'm going to delete.
delete. I'm going to erase one of my rows so they're bigger. Okay, let's do some records. Richard, you're up. Favorite record? 